imagine a game of paintball, right? Imagine a paintball game. I don't know if you ever played paintball before. I have a couple of times and it is exhilarating. If you've never played paintball, I would highly recommend it. I actually got invited by my coworkers recently. We went out, we played paintball, we had a great time. They invited me again another time and then I wasn't able to go because I was still recovering from my surgery. So I was kind of, kind of bummed out about that. But if you imagine a paintball game, right? You got this blue team over here, you got this red team over here and they're shooting paintballs at each other. Um, blue team is shooting paintballs at the red team. The red team is shooting paintballs at the blue team. And imagine that these two teams are shooting paintballs at one another at the exact same rate, right? So imagine that the amount of paintballs from blue to red in a given period of time are the exact same as the amount of paintballs shot from red to blue in a given period of time. The rates of those paintball firings are equal. So the analogy here is that this is a lot like chemical equilibrium. So chemical equilibrium is, uh, is concerned with reactions that are reversible. They can go one way from reactants to products, uh, and they can also go the other way from products to reactants. The, react the reactants can react together to form products, but the products can also react together to form reactants. Now, not all chemical reactions are irreversible. Like, let's say if you have uh, two liquids reacting together to form a gas, and then the gas in an open container, and then the, the gas floats away, well, there's no way that gas is going to float back down and react to form the liquids again. So some reactions are irreversible. Other reactions like the one we're looking at right now where we have hydrogen and oxygen reacting to form water are reversible. So the hydrogen and the oxygen react to form water, but then the water molecules can also react with each other to form the hydrogen and oxygen. Now, the term dynamic equilibrium, chemical equilibrium, dy dynamic equilibrium, they're kind of like synonyms, right? Uh, I like the term dynamic because it implies that the reaction is never just sitting still. The reaction is occurring, both reactions, the forward reaction where the reactants become products and the reverse reaction where the products become reactants, those are occurring at the exact same time. They never stop. Now the term equilibrium is the condition in which the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So I like talking about equilibrium right after kinetics because um, there's a little bit of um, understanding of kinetics that helps to understand equilibrium because kinetics is all about reaction rates and so equilibrium is defined as the condition at which the rate of the forward is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So that's what this double arrow uh, means. That's what this double arrow denotes. This double arrow means that the hydrogen and the oxygen are reacting to form water at the exact same speed, the same rate as the water is reacting to form hydrogen and oxygen. So we can look at this graphically, and I'm going to put myself uh, right in the middle here. There I am, right in the middle, so I'm not in the way. <laughs> okay, see, I'm, I'm slowly getting the hang of this. So we can look at this graphically. So imagine that we start out just with hydrogen and oxygen. We don't have any water yet, and then we allow them to react. Well, what's going to happen? Well, the hydrogen and the oxygen are going to react. Their concentrations are going to decrease. Now, back when we looked at chemical kinetics, we understood that in general, the concentration of a reactant uh, depends upon the rate, or in other words, the rate of a chemical reaction depends upon the concentration, uh, i.e. as the reactants react and become less concentrated, the rate of that reaction slows down, right? And so you can see here that the slopes of these curves, this is concentration versus time, the slopes of these curves for the reactants, hydrogen and oxygen, are decreasing as the reactants become consumed. And then you can see the water is being formed over here. But notice that at a certain point, the curves flatten out and the rates essentially become zero. They're constant, right? And so that's what we call dynamic equilibrium. It's the point at which the rates of the forward and reverse reactions are equivalent. Notice that the concentrations at equilibrium are not equivalent. The concentration of water at equilibrium is much, much higher than the concentration of hydrogen and the concentration of oxygen, right? So the equal, for a reaction to be at equilibrium, that says nothing about the relative concentrations of the reactants and products, only that the rates of the forward and reverse reactions are the same. So it's very, very important that we keep that in mind going forward. Um, as I said before, if anybody has any questions or any comments or any concerns, please feel free to drop a message in the chat or better yet, call into the show via Discord. There is a link right down there 
in the description. All right, so let's keep going. So here we go. I'm going to move myself back here. Now, one way that we can quantify the relationships uh, between the concentrations of the reactants and products at equilibrium, at the condition in which the forward and reverse reactions are the same, is by using something called the equilibrium constant, which we call uh, capital K. So you might be thinking, well, K, doesn't that stand for the rate constant when we were looking at kinetics? Well, that was a lowercase K. The equilibrium constant is a capital K. So if you're one of those people who likes to write in all caps all the time, you might not want to do that when it comes to chemistry because you might mean to say one thing and then end up saying something completely different because you chose to do uh, to, to write a capital letter instead of a lowercase letter. So anyway, so the equilibrium constant K, what is it all about? So the equilibrium constant K, if you have a general uh, reaction at equilibrium where we have A moles of A reacting with B moles of B to produce C moles of C and D moles of D, where the lowercase letters are the stoichiometric coefficients and the uppercase letters are the reactants and products themselves, the equilibrium constant, K, is equivalent to this expression here, where we have the concentration of the product C raised to the power of the coefficient, lowercase c, times the concentration of the product D raised to the coefficient of lowercase d, the coefficient. That expression, that whole product, divided by the product of, now it's kind of unfortunate that the term product refers to the result of a multiplication problem because I'm talking about product multiplication, but then I'm also talking about product like product, products of a chemical reaction. So <laughs> it's a little bit confusing. So I'll try to be as uh, clear about that as I can. So again, we have c raised to the c power uh, times d raised to the d power divided by the product of the multiplication of the reactant A raised to its stoichiometric coefficient, lowercase a, times the reactant B raised to its stoichiometric coefficient B. So that is the equilibrium constant, right? So if we wanted to look at a problem like this, so we were just looking at this reaction here, this equilibrium reaction where we have hydrogen and oxygen reacting together to form water at equilibrium. If we wanted to write an expression for the equilibrium constant associated with this reaction, how would we do it? Well, we are asked to express the equilibrium constant for this reaction. Well, remember the equilibrium constant is simply the concentrations of the products raised to their stoichiometric coefficients divided by the concentrations of the reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. So in this case, K is going to be equal to the concentration of water, H2O, raised to its stoichiometric coefficient, which in this case is an two, so concentration of water to squared, divided by the same thing for the reactants, right? So we're gonna have concentration of H2, and we're gonna square that because the coefficient in front of the hydrogen is two, concentration of H2 squared, times the concentration of O2 to the first power, or just simply the concentration of O2. So this here would be the expression for the equilibrium constant for this reaction. So this is pretty straightforward. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to chime in. Um, otherwise, we're gonna continue to move on. So I think we all have an understanding of how to express equilibrium constants given the balanced chemical equation. Oh, and there's one more thing that I wanted to uh, point out about this relationship between the balanced chemical equation of a reaction and the expression for, for the equilibrium constant. Uh, this relationship has a name and it's called the law of mass action. Let me write that down. Law of mass action. Sounds like some suspenseful movie or something like coming this summer, law of mass action starring Keanu Reeves. I don't know, something like that. That's what it reminds me of. But anyway, we're going to move on. My jokes are terrible. <laughs> That's why we're moving on. Okay. So if we go back to the PowerPoints. Let's see. Ba, 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 ba. All right. So, okay. So, okay. That's great. We know how to express the equilibrium constant for a chemical reaction given its balanced chemical equation. Well, so what? What does the value of K mean? What is the significance of the equilibrium constant? Well, you can probably figure this out just by sort of 
thinking about the formula for K, notice that the K is, is a ratio. It's a ratio of concentrations of products to concentration of reactants. And so if K is, let's say K is much, much larger than one, K is a very, very large number. Well, what does that imply? Well, since this is a fraction, this is a ratio, right? K being much, much larger than one implies that the numerator, the products is much, much larger than the denominator, in which case the concentrations of the products are much, much higher than the concentrations of reactants. And so in this case, the forward reaction is favored and this reaction proceeds nearly to completion. Almost all of the reactants react together to form products at equilibrium. Now, if K is much, much less than one, then it's kind of like the opposite, right? Then in that case, the reverse reaction is favored and there's not many of the reactants that react together to form products at all. That represents a scenario in which the denominator is much larger than the numerator of this fraction. And so we have a very, very small value of the rate constant. So this would be a, uh, a reactant favored equilibrium. The reverse reaction is favored. And as you have probably already guessed, if K is close to one, if it's almost equal to one, then neither the forward nor the reverse direction are favored. And the reaction proceeds about halfway to completion at equilibrium. And again, equilibrium, that just means that the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. Equilibrium does not say anything. I repeat, does not say anything about how fast the reaction occurs. That was chemical kinetics. Kinetics is associated with how fast the reaction occurs, right? Equilibrium constant, all that tells us is how far the reaction has proceeded, right? How far the reaction has proceeded once the rate of the forward and reverse reactions are the same. Really, really wanna make that very, very clear. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to watch the full video from which this clip was taken, click the box over there on the left. And if you'd like to watch my entire chemical equilibrium playlist, click the box on the right. Thank you very much for watching and have a good one.